Howdy folks, this is here, uh, Bob uh, again, uh, starting on another one of my, uh, kind of crazy projects, kind of unorthodox. So what I'm showing you a picture here is a picture of a, uh, stabilizer, um, a steering stabilizer, and, uh, I'm actually going to install, this is, I just wanted to show what this fits, this is the Rough Country N3. Steering stabilizer fits 1988 through 2006 Chevy Silverado Tahoe Suburban GMC Yukon. And there's the part number. And I guess you can already assume now where I bought it. That's right. The Jungle Place online. So I just wanted to show that real quick because uh, I'm going to go downstairs, restart the video, um, and show you what I did to make this uh, work. So. I've got it installed right now. I didn't want to uh, videotape it because I didn't know if it would actually work on a... I have a 99 Dakota RT, so this is... Uh, I'm retrofitting this to fit a Dakota because it had the right uh, uh, dimensions. And it came with the correct brackets. That one I bracket I'm putting on the uh, steering... Um, on the... Um, ah, shoot. Tie rod end. And then this bracket here, I'll give you a nice close-up of it. You see what it looks like before I cut it up because I didn't take a picture of it. But I had to cut that bracket in three ways, and I'll show you how I had to cut that bracket to fit to make it fit on my Dakota. And uh, I'm going to get right down to that now, so I'll be back here in a second. All right, folks, uh, here I am outside, and uh, here's my uh, Dakota. And I've done a couple other videos on it. And uh, just to show you what tools I had to use, here's part of the bracket. I'll bring that over underneath the truck. Um, I needed a cutoff wheel. I needed a drill. And I think that drill bit might be a quarter inch. I also used a uh, 3 8 drill bit. Um, I really needed a half inch hole, but I, I couldn't find my uh, half inch drill. So uh, a little bit of uh, trans old used transmission fluid to uh, lubricate the drill bit so they wouldn't overheat. Piece of wood to uh, put the... Uh, Underneath, use a little bit of uh, this. Um, this is uh, copper anti seize. Just got it on a deal online, same store. A uh, bunch of tools. Basically, only a half inch socket, and this was a 22 millimeter. Actually, I didn't use that one. I used a uh, scratch that. Um, I used a 24 millimeter to take the. Um, um, I needed a. 9 16 wrench, tape measure, a magic marker, which I'm going to show you, half inch ratchet, and then uh, 3 8 with a deep well socket. So here's what I did, and I did this because after I put these new tires on the truck, I was getting some steering wheel shake, kind of similar to the death wobble now. A lot of people said it was my rack and pinion, which is actually is quite rusty, but the truck wasn't doing this until I got these nice grippy tires, these uh, Toyos. Uh, nice uh, highway tire. So um, they said I couldn't do this, that it wasn't possible to put a steering stabilizer on this truck. So uh, because somebody told me I couldn't do it, I wanted to go ahead and see if I could do it. And I've done it. And uh, this is that same kit I just showed you. And here's the uh, here's the where I mounted it on this side. I don't know if you can see it. I've got my uh, I mounted it right on the. Um, but I've pushed it. I made it almost. It's almost perfect. But uh, as it sits right now, the um, get some light on the subject here, so you can see I've mounted it on the tie rod end with that. Uh, those two clamps. There's two clamps that go through. Now I had to. Um, what I did was this is that large bracket I showed you online. Okay, so I cut it. I cut uh, I cut that bracket, and um, I believe, uh, and I used this is the original hole on one of the brackets, and this hole I had to drill, and I just used a three eighths for now. I really needed it to be a half inch because these two bushings have a half inch that when you pinch them together, they go inside and uh, keep the um, stabilizer the mounting rod from hitting the mount that's how all shocks work but 
I couldn't find my uh, I couldn't find my half inch drill, so a three eighths had to had to work because I had just had to see if this would work real quick. And let's see, can't even. So yeah, so that's and I still probably have to tighten that screw. I don't think I tighten that screw all the way. Like I said, this is my first mock up. I had to buy this boot separate. They don't give you that boot in the kit um, to keep uh, dirt out. Although I see it's got a nice uh, gap there, so not sure how that's supposed to keep a bunch of dirt out. But anyway. Uh, I guess maybe I can move uh, put another zip tie on it so I cut this large bracket and it fit I mean this is almost a perfect fit so I believe if I wasn't mistaken um, I believe this this piece was down here or like this and I had to use another piece of the bracket, which is this L-shaped piece here, because when I mounted this uh, bracket here, it needed to be not 90 degrees laying flat on the, um, you know, on the uh, tie rod end. It actually is at an angle, this bracket here. It's an angle. You can see this piece up here. If you can't, I'm trying to get a shot of this, but maybe you can't. There we go. You can see that angle piece that I had to put in there. Because that's the angle I needed to get this uh, shock properly in the right, you know, mounted properly. And that's that was the perfect angle to miss the bolt. And, you know, it almost looks factory. Um, so that worked out real well. So, yeah, so this was, I believe, like this. And that little ch wedge chunk over there was went right in here. And that bracket, you can see all line. So... This was the original hole that they gave you with the bracket, and I had to drill my own 3 8 hole right here. And um, that chunk I don't need. Now, what's happened, um, I turned the wheel lock all the way to the right, and it was good. And I turned the wheel, I tried to turn the wheel all the way to the left, and this bolt right here, although it doesn't hit, it comes very close to this um, this end bolt right here comes very close to hitting the uh, rim and worse than that the end of the shock actually digs into the a tire I don't know if you can see right there when I t turned it, it actually put a scrub mark on the tire so the end of the shock is actually going into the tire that's not good so this mounting stuff is probably too close to the tire um, when I mounted it, it actually, this bracket kind of moved over about a half an inch towards the edge of the wheel. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to loosen this all up. i got to take this uh, bracket off here because I'm going to cut these bolts off till they're near flush. And then that will take care of it hitting the rim. And then I'm going to move this bracket. I'm going to readjust it so... Uh, it doesn't pull over towards the rim and then I'm also going to lop uh, part of this uh, I'm actually going to try and get it without lopping the end of the shock off because there's actually a, a part here where you can put a uh, you can put a wrench on there for that bolt if you ever have a problem getting the bolt off I guess you could just cut it off but um, I'm going to have to try and do something because it's too long and it's hitting the tire and that's no good I think it's very 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 close I had it almost full lock when the uh, shock hit the tire so let me get on to doing that real quick. I'm going to cut the video off because I'm uh, not sure how long it's going to take me. And uh, I don't know, it's starting to get kind of dusk out. And I've got about maybe an hour's worth of light and I'm getting tired. So let me try and get this taken care of and see if it's going to work. And I'll hit you back up here in a minute. Hey folks, Bob back. And uh, just wanted to follow up on this uh, project here. And I give a couple updates. So, uh, you know... A lot of people said that this isn't possible, um, but um, I had a, uh, you know, vibration back and forth, and I wasn't sure if uh, some people said the rack was wore out, which it is kind of old, but it's not leaking, and uh, maybe it was these new tires, I'm not sure, uh, maybe there's a little too much camber, but um, I know that uh, steering stabilizers help uh, smooth steering out, keep it from... Um, uh, swaying back and forth you know generally they just help uh, improve the quality of the steering and um, 
whatever condition this uh, stabilizer now you know of course the truck doesn't drive like brand new but definitely a huge improvement and I don't feel the vibration in the steering wheel which was actually pretty violent uh, which um, sparked me to uh, embark on this whole project so um, it is actually possible to install one of these and it is a little bit close here but um, it's close but it's not hitting there's still fingers worth of play in there I suppose maybe it might hit if I hit a big enough bump but there isn't much play in these uh, RT Dakota um, suspensions the bump stop which is up here now I had to make these bump stops because at the time I couldn't find them so I made them out of a solid piece of rubber actually I think somebody's making them aftermarket now but uh, I mean there is there's only an inch of you can stick your finger in here so maybe three quarters of an inch of travel before it hits the bump stop and that's basically about what I got in here and uh, this actually does move some anyway so I think it's fine there um, so what I had to do here was I showed uh, in the previous video I showed where I had to cut a wedge in here so this uh, it actually gave me a little more clearance here but I had to take that wedge out um, because I needed enough play to keep this um, to keep these bolts and to keep this uh, I could have cut this but I didn't want to uh, and so um, oops sorry about that so to keep the end of this to from puncturing the tire when you turn uh, to the right um, you need about you know you need at least that much space and uh, if you if you attempt this it's just something you'll have to experiment with but um, I had to go I put my u-bolt uh, clamps um, right at the very end of the the nut so if I ever have an alignment I'm gonna have to have to have to take this off but that's fine um, I also had to cut twice I had to cut these uh, I had to cut the extra bolt that was sticking out from the u-bolt I had to cut those off because as it went inside the, this actually goes inside the rim when you turn uh, this this piece here goes inside the rim and these uh, the extra bolt was sticking out about an inch and it was it was hitting the rim so that had to come off um, that wedge that I showed earlier had to come off which uh, essentially all that wedge what that wedge did was uh, it uh, you know allowed this bracket to sit down and uh, what it did was it, it the bracket leveled out and it made this this before with the wedge in there the bracket was about this close to the tire and then uh, when I took it out it moved it about an inch over just because it laid down flat on the steering mechanism so um, you know I just drove it I've driven it twice and uh, I've got it mounted I mounted it just up here um, just because it was ease of use and I tightened the heck out of that bolt and you know about as tight as it was when I took it off actually, but uh, That was really the only place I could uh, mount it and that is the uh, stock mount with this kit I just like I said I cut this part and I cut this part off and basically I I Tried to use this wedge piece, but I didn't need to so I, I spent about an extra hour crafting that wedge which I didn't need to so um, it took me if you minus that, uh, you know, cutting that piece, it probably took me about, I don't know, two between two and three hours to do this because you do have to cut. And, you know, I, like I said, that it took me probably an hour to do that bracket. So it's probably somewhere around two hours. Um, and uh, I was going to cut this bracket off here, make it look nicer. I was going to kind of cut it at an angle, but I figured, you know what? Uh, I was pretty tired last night and... Um, it wasn't really hurting anything it leaves a little bit more material on the bracket so uh, I just left it alone one other thing I did to move the shock over uh, I needed uh, this end of the shock I needed that over this way so it wouldn't hit the tire um, I took the rubber piece um, out of this side and I put I doubled it up on this side as you can see there's two pieces of rubber here and that pushed the shock over that way and then I had an extra piece of rubber from another I think it was putting my uh, Plymouth on. I had some extra rubbers, these rubber pieces. They were a little thicker. What I did was I just cut one in half, or cut it, cut it into shaved a third of it off, and then I used that in here. Um, that way the shock would. I didn't want to pull the shock over this way. I wanted it to go this way, 
so this end would not hit the tire when I turned all the way locked to the right so um, I just drove it I've driven it twice and as you can see there's I'm actually here I mean if this was digging into the tire when I turned I wouldn't be here I'd be on the side of the road with a destroyed tire so um, it seems to be working all right so uh, yeah I'm gonna go with that for now uh, hopefully everything holds up my bolts are tight enough and uh, you really have to get this bolt up here tight to keep this bracket from moving um, is this the best you know way to mount this bracket I don't know um, it actually you know would hit if it goes too far it would hit this piece here this is there's it most people that's why most people say that this is really not possible because there really isn't any uh, good way to mount the shock this is really the only mounting point under here without really you know having something custom fabricated which would probably cost a lot of money which would probably not make this cost effective and so you just have to try and figure out some other way to fix the vehicle but I bought this kit and it was a used kit and actually they don't even have them they're actually made uh, uh, they're actually made in that uh, country there but you know in case anybody was wondering but uh, I don't know seems pretty good um, it actually worked I didn't need anything else um, I just used my ragtag tools to uh, you know cut that uh, bracket and you know a 3 8 drill to drill the holes um, yeah so this whole you know this was this bracket wasn't you didn't need to modify that from the kit this bracket you did have to cut but this was the pre-drilled hole from the kit which actually fit was a half inch hole and this bolt fit uh, I think it fit I think this bolt fit perfectly in that hole with no slop so and that's exactly what you want because you don't you don't want the bracket uh, moving around and uh, yeah so you know if this is something that you need to do on your truck you can get these on uh, you know the uh, jungle site there and uh, it was pretty good um, I bought it used it was missing the uh, two u-bolts but they were nice enough to uh, I went down to the uh, local big box hardware store and picked up two they were real cheap they were dollar and 38 cents a piece and uh, they re reimbursed me for them which was really nice and that's why I shop there because uh, uh, they take care of me I, I buy a lot of products there and uh, yeah so and it seems to have helped and uh, pretty much solved my issue with the uh, the steering wheel uh, vibrating and also the steering the steering itself feels more linear um, it doesn't feel as loose when I hit bumps the front end it doesn't shake around as much as it used to with just the, your regular rack and pinion so probably uh, it'll probably actually you know if I do this rack and pinion in here is, I don't know it may even be original but it kind of looks like it had been replaced at least once but um, everything has just got a lot of surface rust because the truck was parked uh, you know in the yard somewhere so uh, these uh, apparently the manufacturer didn't want to paint these or uh, coat them with anything so it's full so so are my lines they're all rusty you know I really need to at one point if I restore this truck further I may take all this off and clean them up and then paint them so they don't rust so anyway that's it and uh, again I'll uh, list the uh, the package that you can buy this on uh, online I'll list the uh, the part number it's actually for a 99 and up uh, Chevy GMC four-wheel drive and uh, this being a 99 Dakota that's pretty darn amazing that it actually fits as well so uh, I mean I to get some more clearance up here I could have dropped this bracket down just a little bit it's probably what I should have done um, I'm not gonna touch it right now because I'm freaking tired and uh, it's working so I'm just gonna leave it alone and uh, probably actually make the uh, the shock a little more linear with the uh, steering angle because the shock angles like this and the steering is a little bit more straight but I don't know, I drove it, didn't seem to matter, so I'm just going to leave it for now. Uh, maybe at a later date I'll fix it up, but I'm still kind of reeling from yesterday's activity. So, uh, if anybody tries this, I hope it helps them out. And, uh, yeah, take care, everybody. And uh, stay safe and stay free. Take care.